place is born in me today. The Holy Christ is born in me today. The Holy Christ The Holy Christ is born in me today. Thank you all so much for joining me in studying A Course in Miracles workbook for students. We're reading from the original edition. I'm forgiveness teacher of the Ozarks, Willie, and we're ready for lesson 303 here on Monday, October the 30th of 2023. The Holy Christ is born in me today. The Holy Christ is born in me today. Watch with me, angels. Watch with me today. <laughs> Watch with me, you unseen host of heaven. Watch with me today. Let all God's holy thoughts surround me and be still with me while heaven's Son is born. Let all God's holy thoughts, we're all holy thoughts, all of God's creation. Let all God's holy angels and thoughts people. Let all God's holy thoughts surround me and be still with me while heaven's son is born. Let earthly sounds be quiet and the sights to which I am accustomed disappear. Let Christ be welcomed where he is at home and let him hear the sounds he understands and see but sights which show his father's love. Let him no longer be a stranger here. For he is born again in me today. <laughs> Let the Christ be born in us today. The Holy Christ is born in me today. And the prayer says, Your son is welcome, Father. He has come to save me from the evil self I made. He is the self that you have given me. He is but what I really am in truth. And he is the son you love above all things. He is myself as you created me. It is not Christ that can be crucified. Safe in your arms, let me receive your son. Safe in your arms, let me receive your son. The Holy Christ is born in me today. And let's go look in our text reading. And we're ready. We're in chapter 3. 31, The Simplicity of Salvation, and ready for paragraph 62, which is the beginning of uh, Recognizing the Spirit, section Roman numeral 6. Recognizing the Spirit. You see the flesh or recognize the Spirit. You see the flesh or recognize the Spirit. There is no compromise between these two. If one is real, the other must be false. For what is real denies its opposite. There is no choice in vision but this one. What you decide in this determines all you see and think is real and hold is true. On this one choice does all your world depend. For here have you established what you are as flesh or spirit in your own belief. If you choose flesh, you never will escape the body as your own reality, for you have chosen that you want it so. But choose the Spirit, and all heaven bends to touch your eyes and bless your holy sight, that you may see the world of flesh no more, except to heal and comfort and to bless. See the world of flesh no more, except to heal and comfort and to bless. 63. Salvation is undoing. If you choose to see the body, you behold a world of separation, unrelated things, and happenings that make no sense at all. This one appears and disappears in death. That one is doomed to suffering and loss. And no one is exactly as he was an instant previous, nor will he be the same as he is now an instant hence. Who could have trust where so much change is seen? 
for who is worthy if he be but dust? Salvation is undoing of all this. And constancy arises in the sight of those whose eyes salvation has released from looking at the cost of keeping guilt because they choose to let it go instead. 64. Salvation does not ask that you behold the spirit and perceive the body not. Okay, now that's nice to know. Salvation does not ask that you behold the spirit and perceive the body not. It merely asks that this should be your choice. For you can see the body without help, but do not understand how to behold a world apart from it. For you can see the body without help, but do not understand how to behold a world apart from it. Basically, what, he's, what, I'm, what I'm hearing him say is that he wants us to rely on the Holy Spirit for our vision. So that we're, even though we can see the world without without uh, help, without the Holy Spirit's guidance. We don't want to. We want to use the choice that's given us to rely on the Holy Spirit. Salvation does not ask that you behold the Spirit and perceive the body not. It merely asks that this choice, that this should be your choice. For you can see the body without help, but do not understand how to behold the world apart from it. It is your world salvation will undo and let you see another world your eyes could never find. Be not concerned how this could ever be. You do not understand how what you see arose to meet your sight. For if you did, it would be gone. The veil of ignorance is drawn across the evil and the good and must be passed that both may disappear so that perception finds no hiding place. How is this done? It is not done at all. What could there be within the universe which God created that must still be done? 65. Only in ignorant, or oh, excuse me, only in arrogance could you conceive of that you must make the way to heaven plain. Only in arrogance could you conceive that you must make the way to heaven plain? The means are given you by which to see the world that will replace the one you made. Your will is done. In heaven as on earth, this is forever true. It matters not where you believe you are, nor what you think the truth about yourself must really be. It makes no difference what you look upon, nor what you choose to feel or think or wish. For God himself has said, Your will be done, and it is done to you accordingly. 66. You who believe that you can choose to see the Son of God as you would have him be, forget not that no concept of yourself will stand against the truth of what you are. Undoing truth would be impossible, but concepts are not difficult to change. One vision clearly seen that does not fit the picture as it was perceived before will change the world before. One vision clearly seen that does not fit the picture as it was perceived before will change the world for eyes that learn to see because the concept of the self has changed. Let's read that sentence once again. One vision clearly seen that does not fit the picture as it was perceived before will change the world for eyes that learn to see, because the concept of the self has changed. Are you invulnerable? Then the world is harmless in your sight. Do you forgive? Then is the world forgiving, for you have forgiven it its trespasses, and so it looks on you with eyes that see as yours. Are you a body? So is all the world perceived as treacherous and out to kill. And the last paragraph finished this section, 67. Are you a spirit, deathless and without promise of corruption and the stain of sin upon you? So the world is seen as stable, fully worthy of your trust, a happy place to rest in for a while where nothing need be feared but only loved. Who is unwelcome to the kind in heart? And what could hurt the truly innocent? 
Your will be done, you holy child of God. It does not matter if you think you are in earth or heaven. What your Father wills for you can never change. The truth in you remains a radi as radiant as a star. The truth in you remains as radiant as a star, as pure as light, as innocent as love itself. And you are worthy that your will be done. Wow. So you don't have to know how that's going to all happen. Just have the willingness to, uh, to, to, to see spirit, to recognize spirit and not to see the flesh. Just be willing. That's all that's required, a willingness. Remember how we learned that in our text? Matter of fact, matter of fact let's go look at it next. What is the second coming? Remember how it says there that, uh, and most of all, it needs your willingness. Before we read the, what is the second coming, which is our associated reading with the Holy Christ is born in me today. What on earth is going on? Uh, okay, I found these all on uh, holidaysandobservances.com. That's where I get most of these, and Drexel University. Buy a donut day. And I would encourage you, if you're going to buy a donut, if you're going to eat a donut, make sure it's organic, sprouted, whole grain. That's going to be hard to find, but that's why I do it. And then I, I probably wouldn't fry it. I'd bake it. Wouldn't use a lot of oil. And I wouldn't sweeten it with white sugar. I'd probably sweeten it with monk fruit, stevia, or maybe honey. Uh, maybe maybe some organic raw brown sugar. Uh, anyway, get some nutrients with it. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Checklist day, and that checklist for checking airplanes came about because of the 1935 Boeing 299 crash in Wright Field, Ohio. Uh, create a great funeral day. And I like to think of funerals more as memorials. You know, time to remember those who, so I call them memorials. Uh, and then some things that hover around uh, Halloween, I guess. And Devil's Night, Haunted Refrigerator Night, Mischief Night, National Candy Corn Day. And I didn't even know what a candy corn was. I had to look it up. You don't want to eat candy corns. I was going to look up. Anyway, <laughs> they're just full of sugar. It's all they are, sugar and and butters and Things that you probably don't need a lot of. We want nutrient-rich foods. National Publicist Day. and some, A publicist is someone who generates publicity for an organization, product, or individual. National Text Your Ex Day. <laughs> We've talked about that before. You want to move on be, without uh, grievances. So that if you need to text your, your past partner, you can without feeling like you're holding a grievance. Don't want to hold a grievance. That's the important thing. Pumpkin bread day. And of course, this time of year, I'd encourage you to paint on your pumpkin uh, a face if you want to put one out and not cut it open. The only the problem with cutting it open is that it, it molds and you can't get the meat. And the pumpkin should be for eating, not for just uh, spoiling. Uh, pumpkin bread day. Speak up for service day. And that recognizes the contribution of youth for community service. Uh, World Audio Drama Day and Sugar Addiction Day. And I found this about sugar on the Harvard Health. Uh, and it says that in Doctor Who says, and it's H-U, the effects of added sugar intake are high blood pressure, inflammation, weight gain, and diabetes and fatty liver disease. And all these are linked to an increased risk of heart attack and stroke. Uh, and I'm, and I'm, and I just, I think that what you really need to do, how do I say it? Uh, just don't eat a lot of low nutrient foods like white sugar. There's just, there's virtually no nutrients in it. It's just calories. Uh, you know, learn to, to let your tastes uh, hover around. If you want something sweet, eat some fruit. Uh, maybe it, you know, maybe some some dried fruits like dates, and be be easy on those. Don't eat too many. Uh, 
anyway, that's my opinion about um, about white sugars. Be be easy on it. Don't eat too much. But just because you're 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 filling up on things that you you want to fill up on things that have have all those nutrients that you're that will run through your blood and heal you, and, you know keep you keep you whole, <laughs> keep you healthy anyway. And I want to tell you about a, a since we're talking about pumpkin bread day, let's talk about another pumpkin, a kirkabit. Uh, it's a cucurbita pepo is the pumpkin. Uh, they're a, and this is the cornfield pumpkin. And this I'm reading to you out of the Seed Savers Exchange. First offered by Seed Savers Exchange member Glenn Drowns in 1984 yearbook from USDA Seed. This is our top pumpkin for carving and fall decorating. <laughs> The, if you are going to carve it, try to at least carve out a little bit because kids do like seeing the little light coming through the eyes of the candle sitting in there. But but I would encourage you to do it the day before Halloween. Scrape out as much of the of the meat you can and leave just the rind, and then and 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 can it, cook it, eat it, make a pie out of it, make some pumpkin bread out of it. And, and then if you only leave it out for a day or two in the cold, keep it in the refrigerator during the day maybe or or just leave it out for one day. You could probably go ahead and and before it starts molding and and not being worth eating, go ahead and and make the you know just have it for one day and it'll probably be fine to make uh, pumpkin bread out of. But I've been just painting on my, outside of ones that I use around here. I just take magic marker and just write on it and set it out on the front porch, <laughs> and then it's ready when I want it. The, okay, so the, this cornfield pumpkin, the fruits are flattened, light-colored, and thin-skinned, and weigh 12 to 15 pounds. The, the very sturdy stems rarely break off. It was traditionally grown as a companion crop planted with field corn, and it's a 90-day pumpkin. Isn't that cool? My grandpa used to always say, you know, be sure to plant your vine stuff in with your corn. Okay, and it looks like I'm going to maybe get some rain as we're finishing up here. What is the second coming? Christ's second coming, which is sure as God, is merely the correction of mistakes and the return of sanity. It is a part of the condition which restores the never lost and reestablishes what is forever and forever true. It is the invitation to God's word to take illusions place. The willingness to let forgiveness rest upon all things without exception and without reserve. It is the all-inclusive nature of Christ's second coming that permits it to embrace the world and hold you safe within its gentle advent, which encompasses all living things with you. There is no end to the release the second coming brings, as God's creation must be limitless. Forgiveness lights the second coming's way because it shines on everyone as one, and thus is oneness recognized at last. The second coming ends the lessons which the Holy Spirit teaches, making way for the last judgment, in which learning ends in one last summary that will extend beyond itself and reaches up to God. The second coming is the time in which all minds are given to the hands of Christ, to be returned to spirit in the name of true creation and the will of God. The second coming is the one event in time which time itself cannot affect. For everyone who ever came to die or yet will come or who is present now is equally released from what he made. In this equality is Christ restored as one identity in which all sons of God acknowledge that they all are one. And God the Father smiles upon his Son, his one creation and his only joy. Pray that this second coming will be soon, but do not rest with that. It needs your eyes and ears and hands and feet. It needs your voice. But most of all, it needs your willingness. Let us rejoice that we can do God's will and join together in its holy light. Behold, the Son of God is one in us and we can reach our Father's love through Him. Okay, well, let's go look at our, our, uh, our lesson itself again. The Holy Christ is born in me today. 
Watch with me, angels, watch with me today. Let all God's holy thoughts surround me and be still with me while heaven's Son is born. Let earthly sounds be quiet and the sights to which I am accustomed disappear. Let Christ be welcomed here. Excuse me, let Christ be welcomed where he is at home. And let him hear the sounds he understands and see but sights which show his Father's love. Let him no longer be a stranger here, for he is born again in me today. The Holy Christ is born in me today. And the prayer says, Your Son is welcome, Father. He has come to save me from the evil self I made. He is the self that you have given me. He is but what I really am in truth. He is the Son you love above all things. He is myself as you created me. It is not Christ that can be crucified. Safe in your arms, let me receive your Son. So the Christ cannot be crucified because the Christ is spirit. Remember, we can either see the flesh or recognize the spirit. Well, let's, let's, let's recognize the spirit. Okay, well, let's, let's uh, be on our way with a little song about, uh, about our, our lesson. And maybe this, maybe the little tune will kind of help. I, I be, try to keep the same kind of tune for, for the, while, during the, the 10 lessons. Under what is the second coming this time. is born in me today. The Holy Christ is born in me today. The Holy Christ Rest with that. It needs your eyes and ears, its hands and feet. It needs your voice. It needs your eyes and ears and hands and feet. It needs your voice. And most of all, Christ 
is born in me today. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's go our way, saying this as best we can every hour of the day. Be sure to do your two longer meditations, morning and evening, where you tell yourself, the Holy Christ is born in me today.